In June of this year, Israel Aerospace Industries named Swami Iyar as CEO of its North American subsidiary with big plans to grow sales and IAI's footprint in the critically important U.S. and Canadian markets. He joins us now from our studio in Washington. Swami, welcome. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Happy to be here. So tell us, how important is the North American market to IAI, and how do you plan to grow sales and presence in the coming years? Well, um, North America has always been a central and strategic market for IAI, and now so more than ever with the uh, changing of the FMF process, uh, you'll find that our commitments, uh, our continued commitment to IAI in North America is going to be even greater. Uh, you know, as our chairman put it, the North American market is 75% of the global defense market for IAI. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think that we have a lot more to offer that we can bring into the United States. So we're planning to grow ourselves by changing our business structure and our models inside the United States to be more relevant to the U.S. defense acquisition market, uh, especially in the way that we conduct our businesses uh, and the legal framework in which we operate a foreign-owned company in the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, for our viewers who are not um, uh, up to all the minutia of the U.S. Security Assistance Program, FMF, as you noted, uh, means uh, foreign military financing, grant aid, and we'll get back to that a little bit later, but uh, IAI for years has been operating two subsidiaries in the United States, ELTA in Maryland, I believe, and Stark in Mississippi. So uh, what specifically are you looking for to make them more successful, productive, and profitable well, specifically, the two uh, facilities that we have here in Maryland and in Mississippi are quite large. In fact, the Mississippi facility is over 120,000 square feet with uh, hundreds of employees. Uh, what we do there is uh, we're beginning to bring in some of the uh, production work from the new sales and orders that are being created by II both here and globally. Uh, for example, we have the uh, missile canisters from the Aero 3 systems that have been put into Stark. Uh, we also do wiring harnesses and some other aerospace components like avionics for the U.S. military. Mm -hmm. So the growth strategy there is to continue to fill that factory with uh, key capabilities in production to uh, grow the local economy in Mississippi, but also to establish a better manufacturing footprint with a broad set of skills that we can begin to use across the entire II product uh, portfolio. Uh, mm -hmm. In Elta in Maryland, we've opened up a cyber innovation center. Uh, we've also uh, began to move in a lot of the counter UAS and border security systems that we're finding a lot of interest in in the United States now with different uh, defense partners. And so that's part of our organic growth strategy within the Elta North America sphere. Uh, largely, mm -hmm. both systems and both these subsidiaries are there to grow uh, those systems that we're able to get into the United States that uh, are of capable, innovative design, uh, right. and that we find that have good footprints for the labors and skill sets in the United States. States. Well, now let's um, focus on this U.S. security assistance. Under the new 10-year uh, package deal, Israel will have to be weaned off of that 26 percent uh, or so of funding that it's able to convert from dollars into shekels to uh, spend uh, domestically on our uh, research and development. So the market becomes even more important for companies like IAI. You have about five years to plan. Uh, is this going to be a huge challenge? Uh, not really a huge challenge, but it is going to be a lot of work. I mean, in the sense that uh, the path forward on how you begin to uh, take advantage of that system and, and make sure that you're poised effectively to create that, we're already doing it. It's already underway. We have a large capability already of uh, handling FMF procurement in the United States, and we do that uh, as well as our normal procurement. Uh, so for us, uh, the, the work is already underway, and the system's actually already in place. Uh, we are looking at a various number of ways to go after that, either our own organic sales to use those systems and uh, those dollars that are converting to shekels, or also looking at potential inorganic targets that we might look at. Uh, we're not uh, in any particular hunt, but if we have the right uh, acquisition we can make, then there may be some value there in doing that in order to take advantage of the FMF. Um, are you, so uh, there's may, more may work I ask to you? Do. There's definitely... Um, sure. uh, you mentioned mergers and acquisitions. So... Um, uh, you're fluid and you have a, a cash flow in the budget to acquire U.S.-based uh, companies? 
Well, right now what we're looking at uh, in, in terms of uh, whether we decide to go forward with an m and is first looking at if, we, if there are potential targets that are worth looking at. At that point, if we see the markets in the right place, then we would look at the cash flow in the, uh, and the budget um, in the whole context of II in general. So mm -hmm. there's no specific um, set aside that we're particularly going and chasing with right now. But uh, like I said, if the right target presents itself, then uh, it's worth the conversation with uh, II and the board. Now, the need to uh, wean Israel off of this, what they call offshore procurement, that amount that they're able to convert into shekels. Uh, we have heard figures here in Israel that Israeli firms could suffer up to $800 million worth of lost business over the decade to come. How much of that $800 million is projected back to lost IAI revenue? Uh, and do you think this is uh, an accurate assessment of the uh, of the issue at risk? Well, I can't really speak to whether or not the $800 million is an accurate assessment of the entire FMF uh, impact to Israel's ecosystem. I can tell you that we're currently assessing what impacts that might have for II and what we would do with our own internal budgeting in order to make sure that um, we protect the jobs that we have over there and protect the, pro the production that we're looking at doing. Uh, as far as the United States is concerned, we have the ability, especially in I in North America, to scale and go after uh, that growth. So whatever the impact ends up being in the final tally, we'll be ready for it. Uh, whether or not um, other systems and other companies can go along with this, that we can help support other businesses in Israel to do that, um, we'd be happy to look at potentially providing those kind of services in the future. Now, I assume one of your responsibilities is also increasing awareness uh, on Capitol Hill, uh, lobbying opportunities for the uh, IAI portfolio on the Hill. Um, how are you going to get around the not made here mentality that bars usually non-American um, non providers from becoming serious suppliers to the U.S. military. Do you intend to convert IAI sure. North America to a American company through and through? Right, so the, the general processes for which a, a foreign company operates in the United States and, and presents itself like an American company is first and foremost, you have to have your own manufacturing footprint here, whether you acquire them or you create it. In our case, we actually have created a very large manufacturing facility, uh, both in Maryland and in, a small, in Mississippi and a larger, a smaller one in Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, what that does for us is gives us the ability to produce in America indigenous content or build a print or build a spec, uh, the very systems that we would uh, want to sell into the United States. So that's the only real tangible way you become truly an American branded company inside America. Additionally, there are legal constructs you put in place with American Board of Directors right. um, through what they call a, a foreign owned mitigation, and we're doing that as well. Mm -hmm. So between those two, that'll be the, the strategy by which we present ourselves as made in America. Um, and then lobbying activities will be mostly to create awareness around that we are now doing that. And uh, I would imagine that IAI's selection of you as a CEO speaks volumes uh, with your U.S. Air Force background, not only as an operator uh, to evaluate the product's uh, benefit to the U.S. military, but also as a, um, an official focusing, focusing on the security assistance program. Your view? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm flattered by that, but I think, uh, you know, that's part of our strategy in general. I mean, most of, I mean, everybody in II itself is a veteran. I think there's some value um, that we create by having that user experience uh, throughout the DNA of the company. Similarly, I'm hiring a lot of veterans and U.S. industry, uh, you know, veterans as well, experts, so that we can create a very U.S. relevant business structure and a set of business models. But in addition, most of us, if not half of us, will have been end users of the products and can speak to the mm -hmm. slight differences uh, that the U.S. Uh, you know, combat mentality has and combat problems are slightly different from Israel and apply that to the product. So that uh, I think that's the, the value in, in uh, adapting what we have. Well, uh, we wish you success as you adapt IAI North America to U.S. relevant needs. Swami Iyer, thank you so much for joining us.